Okay, so the first part was a little dull and boring with a lot of the background and theory. But here's a little bit, uh, some math and fun stuff and some hopefully some things you remember from previous experiences with acids and bases. But first off, we're going to go back to this self-ionization of water, the auto-ionization of water. Any self-ionization is when two like molecules react to give ions. So again, this is where we have two water molecules bumping into each other and we have the transfer of hydrogen so we create hydronium and hydroxide ions and so it looks a little something like this here you see two water molecules and if there is a bumpage again when they're aligned properly with enough energy we can see that transfer of the hydrogen ion and of course it can go back and forth and can go back to being just water molecules now if an acid is introduced then we see that the water molecule eagerly accepts the hydrogen for here, for example, from hydrochloric acid. And now that's how we see how hydronium ions build up in aqueous solutions when we're talking about acids. And that's just a little I wanted to show here. So in a sample of water, this is always happening, always, to a very small degree. It says there, there is only one hydrogen ion for every 555 million water molecules. And so we're going to start seeing some of that mathematically here when we take a look at our, oh, what we're supposed to be looking at. Where to go? There it is. All right. So looking at our lovely KC expression for this reaction, we see that our products are the hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations on the top, and then the concentration of water squared. So at the top, again, very, very small amount of hydronium and hydroxide. And at 25 degrees Celsius, the concentration of water is 56 molar. If I rearrange that equation, I can end up with this expression. Kc times the concentration of water squared equals hydronium times hydroxide concentration. And this is a very special expression. That's the ion product constant for water, Kw. And so at 25 degrees Celsius, because again, very temperature dependent, that number is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. As a matter of fact, um, at body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, that changes to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 14. So again, very temperature dependent. And so what that means is at 25 degrees Celsius, the hydronium and hydroxide concentrations are each 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. Now when an acid or base is added to water, we no longer have hydronium and hydroxide concentrations equal, but we will still have the fact that when you multiply those concentrations together, it's going to equal Kw, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So let's investigate that. So with our strong acid and base solutions, even though adding hydronium or hydroxide does indeed cause the self-ionization equilibrium to shift left, according to Le Chatelier, it's really an insignificant shift. And again, strong acids and bases. So if 0.1 mole of hydrochloric acid is dissolved in water, then we say that the concentration of hydronium is 0.1 molar. Same thing with a strong base, sodium hydroxide. If 0.1 moles is dissolved in the water, then the concentration of hydroxide is 0.1 molar. Now, due to the self-ionization, the other ion is still present. So, again, Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. If I had 0.1 molar, my concentration of hydronium, and I solved this, hydroxide would still be 1 times 10 to the negative 13th molar. Small, but still there. And vice versa if I would have plugged in 0.1 molar for the hydroxide. So the other ion is still present, although in a much smaller amount. So here's a question you can answer. Calculate the hydronium and hydroxide concentrations for a solution of barium hydroxide that is 0.125 molar at 25 degrees Celsius. Again, temperature dependent. Well, BaOH2 means that there are two hydroxides dissociating. So if the solution is 0.125 molar, you have twice as many hydroxides, so your hydroxide concentration is 0 0.250 molar. Now I can use my Kw expression and plug and chug. 
So I plug in the hydroxide, plug in Kw, solve for hydronium, and it's 4 times 10 to the negative 14th. Still present, but in a very small amount. So remember, in a neutral solution, the concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide are equal, and that number is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. 7. Okay, 10 to the negative 7. Acidic solutions, the hydronium is greater than that, greater than hydroxide. Basic solutions, the hydroxide concentration is greater than that and greater than hydronium. So if a question comes up like, a solution has a hydroxide concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative fifth at 25 degrees Celsius, we can answer if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. It's not neutral because it's not 10 to the negative 7. It's bigger than that. 10 to the negative 5 is a greater number than 10 to the negative 7. So this is a basic solution. Now, of course, those numbers aren't as user-friendly as the pH scale. And the pH scale, which was created when customers were looking at, or a scientist was looking at the acidity in beer, um, it's a reflection of our hydronium concentration. And it just takes those concentrations and uses the power of the log. And by taking the negative log of the hydronium concentration, we get the pH. And the pH is always between 0 and 14 because of our magic Kw constant, 1 times 10 to the negative 14. There's also this thing called pOH, which is the negative log of the hydroxide. Not as common, but still there. And again, because of that constant, another important fact is that pH plus pOH always equals 14. A little helpful hint as far as sig figs are concerned. The number of figures after the decimal in our pH is the same as the sig figs in a hydronium concentration. So I try and follow that rule. Something to think about. How do we measure pH? Um, typically a pH meter or a probe, and hopefully we have some of those functioning, so we'll be doing some labs using those. But there's also these indicators that you may have heard of and seen, of course, like litmus paper turning blue or red. pH paper is a much more powerful indicator because it has several indicators linked together. And these indicators linked together have uh, all the, hold on. I was having some technical difficulties. So yes, pH paper, several indicators, all on the same piece of paper, so it will give us an indication of a pH value between 0 and 14. As you can see here, a lot of the indicators only have one specific change of color. Um, we saw some of these indicators in the Le Chatelier lab. But another common one that we'll use is phenolphthalein. And just to show you how that's working here, phenolphthalein in an acidic situation is clear. In a basic situation, it's turning pinkish. And this is the equilibrium that's going on. So in an acidic situation, the indicator is clear. In a basic situation, the indicator is pink. So according to Le Chatelier, if I add base to this equilibrium, the base reacts with the hydronium. So the hydronium is getting taken out of the equation. And so when the hydronium is getting taken out of, the equilibrium will shift to the right and cause us to see more formation of our pink indicator. That was fun coloring. All right, so let's just look at a couple example problems that we can do mathematically with our pH stuff. And then we will talk about this, review a little bit, and end up having a quiz on all of this stuff in a couple days. But here we see orange juice has a concentration, a hydronium ion concentration, 2.91 times 10 to the negative fourth. What is the pH? And is this an acidic or basic solution? You could already see that it's definitely acidic because 10 to the negative four, as far as the molarity is concerned, Hydronium is greater than 10 to the negative 7, but it's easier to find the pH. All right, when I take the negative log of the hydronium concentration, I get 3.54. pH less than 7 is definitely acidic. 7 is neutral, 
greater than 7 basic. So here we see the pH of arterial blood is 7.40, so just slightly basic. What's the hydronium concentration? Well, we can use the anti-log function, reverse. 10 to the negative pH, the anti-log, is my hydronium concentration. So 10 to the negative 7.40, when I solve that, is 3.98 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. Don't leave an answer like that because you have the ability to use the calculator function to find the actual molarity. And then here's our last one. If we have a 0 0.01 molar solution of ammonia and it has a pH of 10.6 at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the concentration of hydroxide? Well, remember first and foremost that we know that pH plus pOH always equals 14. So I can figure out by subtracting the 10.6 that my pOH is 3.4. And now I can use 10 to the negative pOH, the anti-log of the pOH, will tell me my concentration of hydroxide ion. Again, don't leave it as 10 to the negative 3.4 actually solve it on the calculator. So again, we will work with some of these practice problems and everything else from this lovely chapter on acids and bases and get ourselves prepared to take a little quiz on this coming up in a day or two. All right, stay warm. See you soon.